What's going on everyone? Jeff Blute here back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial on how to make your beats sound better. Uh, and this method that I'll be using is a method known as top-down mixing. Uh, the reason they call it that is because you actually start out by putting plugins on your master channel and then working your way into the individual tracks. Uh, so let's take a look here. Um, now this is something that you should be able to do with stock plugins. I'm actually going to be using all stock plugins from Ableton Live today. But this should be able to carry over into FL Studio, Cubase, Reaper, Reason, and Logic, any DAW that you have, um, you should be able to do this method as long as you have these four plugins. Um, and if you don't have, let's say, a saturator, for example, because I know that one is a little tricky because I've seen it in some DAWs, not others, you know, you can purchase saturators from companies like Waves and stuff like that, but we'll get into that later. First, I want to show you guys this beat that I finished called Phone Tap. It's available on my website now over at bluebeats.com where you can get sound packs and all sorts of other things. Um, but if you want to hear the mastered version, you can go check that out there. Alrighty, so I'm going to play the beat real quick. I'm going to play it without the plugins and then I'll start engaging them so you can hear the difference. Alrighty, not too bad there. So I'm going to start engaging some of the plugins so you can hear what it'll do. I don't know if you guys could tell, but for me, it's definitely a tremendous difference, or at least just enough um, to get your beats bumping. Uh, now, the first thing that I do is an EQ, um, and I'm using the EQ8 here. In this point, I usually set up something around 60 hertz, um, 60, 50 to 100, kind of depending on where, just to boost the kick drums a little bit if I need be. Um, I, and then I have another point at around 250 to 500 depending on where the lower mid frequencies I feel are kind of bothering me and I'll usually sweep them out if I need to. Uh, the next point that I have usually sits in the 4 or sometimes even the 3000 to 5000 kilohertz. So that, that takes out some of the, that's where the frequencies that kind of hurt the ear or bother the ear are. So that just kind of helps take out some of the annoying frequencies. And then finally I have a little bit above 10k just for a bit of shimmer and brightness kind of sometimes to the mix um, and you don't have to do these these are just a few techniques that I like to use for my beats um, you can EQ it however you want whatever feels good to your ears the next plugin that I use this is important because this is really where I create the movement of the song and I'm sure you guys are wondering what do you mean by that because you know the drums br bring the movement or whatever and that is true but this actually to me the best way to, to explain it is the difference between hearing a drum beat and nodding your head to a drum beat um, so I'm going to actually play the chorus again and I'm going to take the compressor on and off so you guys can hear the difference. So you'll start to notice that when I bring in the compressor, you actually start to vibe with the song a little bit more. You want to groove to it. Um, and the way that I achieve this is by starting out with just turning the threshold all the way up, no makeup gain, and I start with the slowest attack in the quickest release. And I kind of see where the beat um, starts to uh, come in. So nothing's happening because the threshold's all the way up. Um, and I'll start to pull this back a little bit. Now, one thing I try to do is never go past. Now, this isn't something you have to do, but this is just what I've noticed is that I'd never go past um, five dBs of gain reduction. 
uh, anything more than that starts to feel a little bit crushed. It doesn't feel as kind of a moving, free-flowing kind of vibe that I'm looking for here. Um, so I usually try to hit this as uh, as low as, or the most gain reduction that I want to do. Um, so let's listen again. Now I won't go all the way to five right away when I start to pull back the threshold because this is where I'm going to start to play with the attack in the release. Um, this is where more of that, that actual movement comes into play. So let's listen again. So once I feel comfortable with the movement of the track, that's where I'll start to bring in the makeup gain to kind of bring the level back up. Alrighty. And next we have a saturator plugin, um, which just adds a little bit of distortion. Uh, there's some great plugins by Waves out there like the Tape Vinyl, Abbey Roads, Vinyl plugins that add the same type of thing. Um, this is just the stock saturator by Ableton. I'm adding like 2 to 4 dBs of gain or drive and I have it kind of like a dry slash wet at about 50% so it's not entirely saturated. It's just, uh, just enough to bring out some of those certain frequencies. And then finally here we have a limiter, and this is where you kind of start to get um, the extra oomph out of the track there. So um, yeah, I usually don't do a whole lot. I never really go any lower than about negative 6 dBs of gain um, because, again, that's just kind of like I feel a comfortable way of uh, – uh, bringing down the threshold um, to boost it without sounding too much where it starts to distort and stuff like that so and there's a quick way for you guys to get your beats sounding better if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below make sure to subscribe so you know when i drop more videos and give it a thumbs up so i know to make more videos like this have a wonderful day